rocket launches are going to increase by some tenfold over the next 10 years. It's going from a very small percentage of the contribution to climate change to a very large portion of it. We're doing stuff to make our airplanes more sustainable, car transportation more sustainable. But what are we doing for rockets? Why is it important to address the issue of sustainability of rocket activity? The stratosphere is a region of the atmosphere that is extremely sensitive to small changes. Primarily, that's due to the mass of air that's there. You're up at one tenth to one one thousandth of the pressure. When you deposit exhaust products up there, their impact on climate, their impact on ozone is disproportionate. At the surface, you've got something that lasts for a few weeks. In the stratosphere, you've got something that lasts for a few years. There are two kinds of particles. There are black carbon soot particles, and there are alumina particles. And these particles have a, a huge lever arm in terms of their influence on climate and ozone because they're in the stratosphere. These same materials emitted at the surface of the Earth would have no impact at all. That's where the uniqueness of rockets comes in. There are a variety of rocket fuels that are currently in use. Very generally, we don't think of the environmental part of it when we think about their uses. We're thinking primarily about the energy that you get, the cost and the safety of those fuels. Across the industry, we're seeing a handful of companies working on biofuel alternatives. I'm Sasha Derry, CEO and founder of Blue Shift Aerospace. It was about a decade ago that I started Blue Shift, and it really started on a farm. It happened to be my brother's farm, and at the time, we were testing out a certain type of rocket engine using petroleum fuel. And I sat down in my brother's kitchen and I saw this certain substance on his windowsill. He just pulled off the farm a few weeks before. And I thought, gosh, if this, if this could work as well, or even close to it as well as the petroleum alternative, it's a much more sustainable way of, of fueling rockets. And uh, so it was like maybe two weeks later, we tested out the, uh, the fuel, found out not only did it work, it worked better than the petroleum, that we made history as the very first company to have launched a rocket commercially using a carbon neutral, bio-derived, non-toxic uh, rocket fuel. We saw the media and the public questioning the larger rocket companies. Why, why aren't you doing things in a more sustainable way? In the past, the space industry has been dominated by a few very large players, uh, US government, uh, Soviet government, Chinese government. But now space is becoming a free market commercial activity. And so we expect small companies to start to play a role here. Gregory Constantine, uh, CEO of Air Company. Air Company is a carbon utilization company that takes carbon dioxide before it's captured from the atmosphere and turns it into useful products that can help shape our future. Yeah, the beauty about working with groups such as NASA is they're really focused on pushing innovation and pushing research and development. Some of the work that we're doing with them is really geared towards the rocket fuel that we're making from carbon dioxide and how we can optimize it for, for use in space. The work that is done in academia and the work that is done in lab doesn't often find its way to, to commercial realities as well, and because that's a it's it's a real it's a big challenge. Um, and so we try to spend a lot of time you know, focusing on innovative business solutions as well that allow that innovation to see the light of day in, in, in the real world. Thankfully, some of the work that we're doing with groups like NASA as well allows us to spur that research and development into actuality. You know, it's the small companies that innovate. If they can innovate and there's all this room for growth, then they can change the face of the space industry. The biggest challenge right now is the research. We have to understand now what these different propellant types will do in the future. We know that the amount of carbon dioxide put out by a, a, a medium-sized rocket is about the same as an airline flight. And we know there are thousands of airline flights every day, and there are only a, a few hundred rocket launches each year. So when it comes to the big picture, aviation has thousands of times greater impact than space flight. But when it comes to the upper part of the atmosphere, there is no aviation and rockets are the only game in town. The space flight industry, it's very small right now.
And if it's froze that way, we could write the paper and, and go home. But we think it's going to grow a lot. And that's why we have to get better scientific information. Thank you.